Can you say this vowel sound for 10 seconds? E for some of my students, that's very difficult. Yet these are the same students who want to speak fluent American English. To them, that often means that they need to talk really, really fast. But that's not actually what makes Native American English speakers sound fluent. No, the real enemy of fluency isn't actually your speed, it's your breath. Or lack of it, I should say. Here's an example. Say this sentence. The fact of the matter is we just couldn't get enough funding for the project. Did you say all of that in one breath? Because you want to. The key is to make sure that there's not too much breath coming out too quickly. Otherwise, what happens is you finish half the sentence and need to then get more air. If you use too much breath, it can also make words sound stronger or different than you may want them to. Here's an example of a sentence that's said with some breath issues. After I enter the university, it's choppy, as in the breath starts and then it stops. And then sometimes the breath even comes off a little bit too strong. Here's an example of a native speaker saying a sentence now. I had just come back from Russia with the first crew. Notice how the words kind of just flow from one word into the very next. The speaker doesn't even need to talk quickly and they can still make everything sound very, very fluent. After I entered the university, I had just come back from Russia with the first crew. Here are some exercises that you can use to make sure that the breath stays flowing. Take a big breath in through your nose. Now let out the air with a shh sound, like a balloon slowly deflating, and try to keep that going for 10 seconds. Notice how when you do that, you can feel your stomach moving in. This is a good thing. It means that your diaphragm, which is an organ that's located near your stomach, it's working. In fact, whenever you speak in American English, you want to feel your diaphragm doing that slow movement in. Here's the next level exercise. Breathe in through your nose again. And now say, I'm speaking English six times in a controlled, calm way without the breath stopping. I'm speaking English, I'm speaking English, I'm speaking English, I'm speaking English. Hopefully I'm you're understanding English, what I'm it feels English. like to have more air passing through your throat and chest and body now. In fact, breath is one of the four most important concepts for speaking in a natural American English accent. What are the other three concepts? Well, you can get more info on those three other concepts in our video course at fluentamerican.com called Four Step American Accent. It goes through exercises that were recorded with real students live, in addition to some individual exercises that you can use to start hearing the difference between native and non-native English speakers and start sounding more native like yourself. But there are other reasons why your breath is not always sounding so smooth. The biggest reason? Consonants. American English hates consonant sounds because they block breath. Let me show you. I'm going to say this sentence two ways. They regularly get up at 6.30. They regularly get up at 6.30. What changed? Well, the first time I went real heavy on the consonant sounds. The sentence was not very smooth. The second time, I focused on the vowel sounds. Now, everything sounds a lot more fluent. They regularly get up at 6.30. They regularly get up at 6.30. Now, some consonants are worse than others at blocking breath. Let's start with R and L. When you say the word regularly at first, it can look pretty scary. Regularly, regularly. But then we need to realize a few things. An R sound needs to be present, but you also want to keep it pretty light. Otherwise, it's going to just completely take over the words you're saying. 
If you say an R three times, you want it to sound more like R R R instead of R R R. Do you hear the difference there? How much more air I let pass through when I do R R R. And two for L's. Well, let me tell you a little secret about the L sound. If the L is in the middle or at the end of a word, you probably actually want to keep the tip of your tongue down. So it often sounds more like oh, oh, or a dark L. Keep these points in mind and let's look at the word regularly again. Just pronounce the vowel sounds for a moment. Eh, u, er, e. Eh, u, er, e. Now we're going to add those consonants back in, especially those R's and those L's, but keep the breath flowing the entire time. Eh, u, er, e. Regularly. 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 Switch between them a couple times, get comfortable, and see how much more fluent it becomes when we allow the breath to keep going. Let's take a look at the T sounds in our sentence now. We saw it in get up in 30. What do these words have in common? Well, they use what's called a fast D or a flap T sound. Notice that I'm not saying get up or 30. If I pronounce those T's, I really block the airflow, get up. 30, get up, 30. You know, it's just so choppy, right? So I want the air to keep going. So instead of using a normal T sound, I'm actually going to use what's again called a fast D. It's like making a D sound, but keeping the air moving and not making it a very strong D. In fact, I don't even really need to have my tongue go up and make contact with the top of my mouth or my ridge. I can say, for instance, get up, get up, or I can say, 30, 30, get up, get up, 30, 30. They regularly get up at 6.30. They regularly get up at 6.30. There's a pretty big difference there, right? The reality is that when you hear Americans talk fast and feel like the sounds don't match the words, this is the reason why we're emphasizing breath and flow, which comes with vowel sounds, not consonants. So even heavy consonants like R and L and T become, well, almost like vowels themselves. If this concept of weakening consonant sounds and strengthening vowel sounds is something you like, you might enjoy this video here, which talks more about reductions.